Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to draw three different types of watercolor corals in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. So as usual, we're going to start by creating a new layer and picking the color that you want your coral to be. I've included a palette in this tutorial so make sure to check out the description below where it is linked. And I will be using my ultimate watercolor brushes which I will also link in the description below along with a promo code just for you guys so make sure to check them out. And we're going to start right in with um, the dark edges watercolor, so no sketch for this one. And all you have to do is really simple. You just draw some sort of a, like elongated ovals with a flat top. So you can see here they're not like super round top, they're kind of flat. And that is basically because what we're drawing in this coral is just a bunch of like tubes. So go ahead and draw a bunch of tubes that are different sizes and also overlap. And I would recommend that you draw between seven and 12 uh, for this tutorial. Once you have your basic shape laid out, what we're going to do is you're going to shift to the basic watercolor brush and pick a slightly darker shade of the hue that you had at first. And you're just going to add some shadows. So you just have to outline the different tubes that you have so that the tubes are in the front are basically going to cast a shadow on the tubes that are in the back. And as you can see, you really don't have to be super precise with these shadows as long as you stay within the main shapes that you laid out at first. The edges don't really matter that much. So you can be pretty rough because the next step we're going to do anyway is we're going to blend everything in so it actually looks good. So in this step, basically really just focus on creating shadows that will look cool. As you can see, I'm focusing on a bottom part of the curl, so you can do the same. But really all we're doing is just kind of making sure that there's a difference between the different tubes when they overlap. And since there are tubes, you're going to draw some openings around the top. So just really simple ellipse with the same brush and same color that you've been using. And I recommend that you don't draw them on all of the little tubes because it doesn't mean that all the tubes are facing in the same direction. So draw openings on most of them, but not all of them. So this next step is really easy. All you're going to want to do is blending the edges. So if you have the watercolor brushes, pick the water blender. Otherwise, pick just the smudge tool um, that comes with Procreate and you're going to go over the edges that you have um, created when you drew your shadows. So as you can see here, I'm really being careful that I'm not actually smudging the side of the tubes, really just the shadows within the tubes. You're now going to add some texture to your coral to make it a bit more interesting. So go ahead and pick the soft grainy watercolor as well as a really light version of the color that you picked at first. And all you're going to do is draw some slightly curved horizontal lines across your coral. And you might be wondering, you know, I picked a really light color but the lines come out dark. And that's because these brushes are watercolor brushes and they do behave like real watercolor. So when you're layering the colors, it's kind of like you're layering pigments. So it just gets darker and darker every time. And that's really cool because it just feels more natural and you're going to get results that look more organic that way. So feel free to pause the video here so you have time to finish covering all your tubes with horizontal line and I will meet you in the next step. I also recommend erasing just a few little lines around the top so where there's the opening just to make it pop a little bit more. And now's the time to use my favorite brush from the watercolor brushes, the salt brush. And this brush the color doesn't matter, all that matters is that you start from a blank color, so the outside of your shape, and then you draw towards the inside of your shape. So go ahead and add some speckles on your curl. And last but not least, we're going to add some splatters, so go ahead and create a new layer, set it to linear burn, and select the splatter brush, set to the initial color that you had at first, and just go ahead and add some splatters. And we are now ready to move on to coral number two. So it is a fairly similar technique and again we're going to start by creating a new layer or at least hiding the one that we had before and then creating a new layer and this time I'm going to remember to rename it properly so I recommend you do the same. And just like for the first coral, you're going to pick the color that you want to use uh, for the main shape and you're going to set your brush to dark edges watercolor. 
So for this coral, you're going to draw a shape that resembles what would happen if a Kleenex and a ghost had a baby. Uh, so basically it's a shape that has a lot of like wavy movement on the top and then a slightly pointier bottom. But there's really no rule on how the waves need to look and how the bottom needs to be pointy. Just draw something that looks like a crumpled Kleenex and you'll be good to go. <laughs> Once you have your main shape, you're going to switch the brush to the basic watercolor, but you're going to keep the same color. And all you have to do is draw some vertical lines that connect the lower parts of your wavy top to the point at the bottom of your shape. And you can make the top a little bit thicker, but you're going to see an example if you look closely, you're going to understand what I mean, and it's really super easy. Once these shadows are laid out, you're going to go back to your water blender brush and you're going to blend in one edge out of two. And I, I can tell my example that I filmed is not super clear, but I'll try to explain with words <laughs> and who knows what will happen. But yeah, basically on every dark shade that you have, you're just blending one of the vertical edge. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, now back to a step that is way clearer. Go ahead and pick the color shifting blush brush and still with the same color, you're just going to add some uh, shadows, I guess, around the bottom of your shape and following the vertical lines as well. Once that is done, we're going to add some more horizontal lines. So just like we did in the first coral, you're going to pick the soft grainy brush as well as a light version of your initial color. And you're going to draw some horizontal lines across your coral. These lines are a little bit more complicated because we're not working with tubes, we're working with a ghost baby. And so as you can see in the example, um, the curves or the lines that are on the lighter part of the corals are curved upwards. And then the lines that are, that are in the darker parts of the corals are curved downwards. And doing that, you're going to get a wavy pattern that resembles the pattern that you have at the top of the curl, but just all over um, the shape. And it's going to give this really cool three-dimensional feel to your illustration. Once you have all your lines, you're going to add some color variation to your coral. And to do that, go ahead and select the selection tool set to freehand. You're just going to draw a wobbly shape uh, wherever you want on your coral, and you're going to feather that shape somewhere around 30%. You're then going to use the adjustment panel hue saturation brightness option set to the entire layer, and you're just going to shift the hue uh, one side to the other. That's depending on what you like but just to get something that feels a little bit more um, interesting, basically. And you can repeat the same steps, but this time instead of shifting your hue one way, you would shift the opposite way to get even more color variation. And we are now at my favorite step, which is the salt brush. So again, this brush, the color doesn't matter. All that matters is that you start from the outside towards the inside of your shape. You're also going to add some splatters. So again, creating a new layer, selecting the splatter brush and just drawing your splatters over your coral. And you can see here, I forgot, change the blending mode to linear burn. And we are now at coral number three, which is probably the easiest, but it has the most iconic shape in my opinion. So it's a win-win. So once again, you're going to pick the dark edges watercolor and just select whichever color you want to use. And you're just going to draw some wavy vertical lines that are going to be the basic stems of your coral. And from these basic stems, you're going to add some secondary branches. So there's no rule, as long as it's flowy, it's going to look good. So yeah, something very simple like that. And from your secondary branches, you're going to add some secondary, secondary branches. 
and you want them to be fairly stubbly just really round and soft and you can also add some really small branches starting from the first main branches um, that are not diverging in secondary branches if that made any sense at all <laughs> and just like we did for the other corals you are now going to blend your edges so selecting the water blender or the smudge tool from procreate just go over the like, overlapping edges within the shape that you created one thing that I really like to do on this specific coral is to pick a sketching pencil and add some outlines on one side of the branches. So in this case, you can see I picked the right side and I'm just going to really quickly sketch um, the outline right there. So with the main color that I've been using, I'm just going over to add a little bit more uh, sharpness to this piece. And make it feel more interesting and you can see here i noticed that i forgot blending one of the stems but quick fix <laughs> so yeah that step makes a big difference in the final result but it, it is however optional if you're not feeling like having something that is sharp and you just want strictly watercolor that's totally fine as well and just like we did for the second coral, we're going to add some color variation. So same technique, we use the selection tool and we create a wobbly selection that we then feather, but this time we feather it somewhere between 30 and 40%. And going back to hue saturation brightness, you're going to play with the hue just to add a little bit more of an um, interesting feel to your piece. And this time we're also going to use the technique to create a shadow. So create a blob shape on the right side of your coral. And in the adjustment panel, you're just going to lower the brightness and up the saturation this time. So keep the same hue. We're also going to create a light. So on the top left of your curl, feather it quite a lot. And this time we are going to lift up the brightness and maybe lower the saturation a little bit. Just to kind of mimic the idea of a light source coming from the top. And the last thing, but probably the most important, if you've watched my other tutorials, is the salt brush. So once again, Start from the outside of your shape towards the inside and it's going to add some really nice white speckles. And you can also add some splatters, so creating a new layer that you will set to linear burn using the splatter brush and a nice color of your choice. You can just go around your piece and adding some really cool textural elements. So there you go, these were three different techniques on how to draw watercolor corals in Procreate. And if you do use this tutorial, make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. If you want to check the watercolor brushes, they will be linked in the description below. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.